I think James, you best get it middle, mate. Yeah. Yeah. You're the smallest. Yeah. I'll get the iPad for comments. I look like a sardine in the middle. Signed Adam Walker, news just in. Just oh, I dread that. I dread that. Oh. We'll come to that in a bit. Right. Anyway, hello, welcome. This is Love Rugby League Weekly, or as I want to call it, Lunch and Crunch. Lunch and Crunch? <laughs> Sunday brunch? No, 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 it's not. It's, it's not Sunday. It's not Sunday. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's br- not brunch. Well, <laughs> we're not having brunch. It's brought to you in association with Betfred, so thank you very much to our partners there. Um, right, I wanted to crack on. We've got about five or six things that I want to get through. Uh, so you can tell I'm back in the horse chair, can't you? It's good to have you back there. Oh, thanks. Thank you. First time back since Malta, isn't it? No. Since yeah. Malta. Yeah, stop making you're making it sound like I'm always abroad. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> you are. The facts don't lie, Dave. Well, um, I was wanting to try and connect with the Malta Rugby League whilst I was away. Uh, Nobody replied to me tweets. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what can you do? Right. Uh, I want to go, go cross straight in. So uh, we're going to be talking. Keith Lacugas, we're going to be talking championship news, we're going to be talking Super League previews and fitting a bit of that news in which you said. Um, we'll also be looking at uh, some stuff that we got sent by uh, our adoring public and our fans. If you do want to comment, by all means add it. I'm sure James here will play. I've got it yet yeah. on, on the iPad, so yeah, if you've got uh, any comments or you want us to talk about anything, do, do let us know. But yeah, I wanted to start with Keith Lacugas because I posed the question last week um, and we didn't really know what was happening. There's two stories that have appeared in the Keith Lee news this week. Uh, the first one is that the club was placed in special measures anyway, which we knew about. Um, but what they've done is it was all running to a deadline date of the Tuesday just gone. Um, so they were under special measures, which means they can't bring any new players in. Um, they had guys that obviously they didn't know what was happening. There's a whole issue about the ownership of the club. Um, but they've got a stay of execution from the RFL. So the RFL have provisionally extended the period by an extra seven days to next Tuesday, Tuesday the 15th, to allow coach Craig Lingard to continue pre-season training. He's still got 17 players. Yeah, because I'd read that they were still training, which, to be fair, is pretty decent of them. It's a fair, fair, fair comment, isn't it? Because you know nobody knows where the next wage packet's coming from. I know that they cleared and they paid everybody up, didn't they, mm. from the other company. But, you know, we're, we're sort of like here... In this situation, where apparently there's a, there's a consortium that's interested in taking them over, which is fronted by former chairman Mick O'Neill. I know he was in charge during the Cougar Mania days, right. so you know he's obviously got some affinity with the club. It'd be great to see him come back into the sport. I suppose the I suppose the say the main saving grace for Keith is that the season doesn't start till like March, does it? The, the League One season, is it? We always have a well. It's, it's actually a little bit sooner. It kicks off on Sunday, the seventeenth oh, of February. Sorry, middle, so, middle, so they, I think we've got the, a couple more weeks. Though, they've got they? a couple more weeks in the championship, but but even so, you know, you're sort of charging into a into a season with six weeks it's, preparation. It's yeah. not the greatest. It's, is it? it's very yeah. It's very dangerous, isn't it? And say a few of them players pick up injuries, then they're going to be like West West, well, West Wales had to field 13, 14 players towards back in the last season. It's no good for play welfare. We always want about play welfare, and uh, this it, this keeps being allowed to happen. So uh, I think it's it's sad times for Keithley. I know they're a traditional club, um, and it's clear that Craig Lingard obviously has a great love for the club. Maybe he'd be sticking with him yeah. when when he could have easily he just uh, walked away. And it, I think if Lingard had walked away, then. We might, we might be looking at a, a t- totally different situation at the moment. Do you throw some blame at those owners which came in? Because oh, these yeah. owners came yeah. in at sort of like midpoint of last season. 
Uh, so about April, I think they came in, and then yeah, I think everything I, just went wrong. I mean, I think the thing that I think there's there's, there's always two sides to the to the thing, isn't there? Obviously, you've got these clubs that have run for however many years, and then you've got people coming in and owning them, and it, I, I suppose you've always got that. There's almost that crossover between the business and the community, if you like. So, like, obviously, a club that's existed for years and years, fans obviously feel like. You know the affinity and they feel like they've got a bit of ownership of the club but the reality is is there's a business aspect to all sports clubs now that have, have got to make it sustainable but then at the same time you know you'd like to think that whoever's owning it would be responsible enough to make sure it doesn't go mm. belly up it's not like they've been chucking loads of money at it because you know they're just you'd imagine if you know you'd imagine if Keithley ran it sustainably they couldn't be much lower down than they were now anyway so it's not as if a, a, an owner's come in and then I think they've been running sustainably, but yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously this new set of owners have come in. Uh, they've had grand plans which haven't materialised for whatever reason. I, I, I don't know, maybe if there's any Keithley fans mm-hmm. watching, you can you know, feed us in on a bit more information than what we've actually seen. Um, but I do find it encouraging that there's still that interest factor out there, isn't there? You know, the likes of Mike yeah, Smith involved, yeah. you know, looking at getting involved again. Um, so it just shows how close it is to, to people's hearts. I mean, I know yeah. Keith Lee's had a couple We've, of issues down the years, haven't yeah. they? Because they, they had that issue where, was it Leeds took half the players off in one season? Was it 2000 or something like that? Um, and they oh, had a obviously, they had the same thing. Obviously, yeah. like I said, the Cougamania thing. But I mean that was 20, 20, 20, 20 odd years ago now, so it's like you've got to. The shame is it's it's not just Keith Lee who's struggling uh, financially. We have seen last season a host of League One and Championship clubs. Well, I know I know Super League clubs are struggling, but we we seen particularly in League One uh, last season a number of clubs struggling where they've had to set up pages etc. and go fund me and, uh, where people have had to make donations to to literally just keep them running until the end of the season until they can change it again. Uh, so I think it's it's not it's quite a worrying time really for for lower league clubs to be honest. Uh. It's kind of a, it's a worrying time anyway, isn't it? Because I mean, this time of year you've not got your your stadium open, you're not playing games regularly. Yeah. You've not got a lot of these places rely not on any other outside income, so it's just like they open for a match day. I think I, it, really. I mean I mean one of the things at the moment is the is the question is there too many clubs because. You know, you've got the fourteen. Sorry, you got the twelve Super League teams, the fourteen Championship teams, and you've got another what, ten or eleven. So let's bring in more expansion teams. then. In that case, yeah, uh, it's just like is it too many? Is it too many teams trying to, um, you know, trying to just you know, trying to tap into the same player pool and the same money pool and, and stuff like that. Is uh, that not the way that the Super League is wanting to go though? They're wanting a reduced, and a I, reduced well, League, I, well, I, really. well, yeah, and I think that's possibly sensible. I think you know. I would imagine that 30 clubs tops. We're an even smaller sport than we even thought we were though, so it's no point us talking about Toronto or going and exploring avenues like that if clubs like Keithley, Oldham, Swinton, Rochdale, Barrow, these are all like traditional yeah, but if areas. If you look at, yeah, I know, but I know what you're saying about traditional areas there, but if people aren't turning up, they're not, they're not turning up to, to watch them. Like, look at Oldham, for example, the Perth. Like the biggest example, how many they they used to have thousands of fans of ten games, uh, b- before two thousand and that, and now they get what three three sixty three eighty fans, uh, through the home gates. It's it's uh it, it's it's okay saying oh let's let's do something about the traditional clubs, but even the fans just aren't, aren't bothered in, in turning up anymore. So what do you do? You force them to go amateur then? Do you just yeah, say right? Well, they're putting that all together. I think you need to. Uh, well, I think they need I, to. I'll not necessarily amateur, throw, but I think there needs to be. A, a, I'll throw a curveball in, and what what? <laughs> and it is a curveball. I'm not saying let's do it before people get on, get on and moan at me, but could you look at having uh, a Manchester like a, a, a Manchester team? Or a greater Manchester team, or whatever it is, with Oldham and Rochdale and Swinton. Oh, he's chucking in mergers. But, but I think this we have mergers. We've just had an article that's gone live on the site uh, just before before we came on about um, Super League. Obviously, when Super League started, a throwback Thursday article where where we're looking at you know where when they created Super League, what they wanted it to look like. Yeah, yeah. So obviously the merger and stuff like that. So I think part of the issue is is that rugby league fans for the last twenty odd years have been like the Super League for the last twenty odd years, whatever. I think part of the issue is is that rugby league for the last twenty odd years, whatever, has been stuck between this. Um, do we want to have franchised expansion or do we want to just keep the clubs that we've already got? And I think the, ultimately we're still stuck between that 
Surely you've got to expand from your base where there's the interest, though. Well, yeah, we're saying, well, we're saying well, no, the interest no, there no, be no, I, I, no, I understand that, but then, if you, like, like Drew's saying, if you look at some of these clubs now, they're only getting a couple hundred fans, and it's like, you know, the, the comparative level to that in mm. football is like Division 9 and 10. It's you know like, I mean? like Cumbria's Cum- 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 a big example as well. Like, look at the, the likes of White Timberwood and what they get. What? Around 500, 600 fans through the gates. Mm. Uh, they'll that, they'll that, get a bigger crowd this weekend because they're playing against well, each other. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. well, well, even yeah. if you look like but, 10 but, years ago, but, like, but, got but look at the amateur teams in Cumbria. That rugby league still, but a big sport in Cumbria. There's no doubt about it. But if you if you look at the figures of the, the semi-professional club or the professional clubs, then the, it's it's. But well, it doesn't fair, necessarily mean that if you combine them together, you're going to no, get no, 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 I'm not, anyway. I'm not going. No, I'm not going to. But is it? The, the question needs to be asked about um, I don't but I think I, people, I, people would rather or they'd rather just go and watch the local team it seems nowadays like Kells or whoever um, but do they, they like, are you saying this have, have you got any sort of evidence of this actually happening no but it's, it's it, it just well if they're not turning up to watch Whitehaven and Workington Dave who are the professional well semi professional teams have you been around Whitehaven and Workington you see loads of Wigan shirts loads of St Allen shirts yeah. you know so there is a there is a latent but is that, is that, but but is that, is that because the, the perception is that the quality of the amateur league isn't that much withdrawn from the quality of league one that's probably what I would I, you know People in Cumbria would they rather watch Kells against What's Wigan Saint Pat's than they would watch Whitehaven against Pebble Stags? To or be whatever. fair, probably the lower end if you compared if you compared light with light last year. Uh, I mean, we saw uh, Huntsville Club Parkside competing in the uh, the Invitational Yorkshire Cup. Yeah, shall we for, call it. yeah. For, I'm, I'm glad you you dubbed it that day because um, I'm sick of people going on about it, which revamped. It. But I like it. I like it. I like the fact that it's been brought yeah, in. But that's that's a, that's another discussion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, but it's it's not that it's not the revamped. Yorkshire what I was getting Club. at though is that uh, Huntsville Club Parkside played against York City Knights last year, who, who romped to glory at that level they had a succession of really high scoring games didn't they they scored over a thousand league points they won by 34 points to four and by all accounts the Huntsville Club Park side side that they faced wasn't the strongest that they can put out either so it I, gives I, you an indication that they're a very strong club they we, could probably finish about half <coughs> of that division really. we were sort of talking about this yesterday weren't we Dave where there's no pyramid structure in place mm. you know you can't you can't start at the bottom and then progress up and it's like, you know, is that where you need to draw a line and say, right, we have Super League and Championship are the two pro, semi-pro leagues, and then have a pyramid underneath that and have a National League, you know, I almost have like a National League that's the top of the amateur game or the, you know, they might pay some players, which comes at Club Parkside, you know. Don't be, pay any players. Well, no, I know, but... I know that's a lot that's been thrown at them, but I asked a couple of other lads who was... No, no, I'm not saying, no, I'm not saying that they no. do. What I'm saying is, is if you create this new league where... Well, you could pay players. You could potentially get to that point, but they're not, they've not got the pressure of having to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds like mm-hmm. you sort of got now in League One. Because, it, I mean, no, in League One, to compete in League One, you've got some of the teams at the top of League One have got players coming in from Hull or they've got, you know... And so what are you suggesting? Something like maybe... Because, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of that variation where there's, uh, in, in some levels, a rugby union now, whereby, uh, yeah, they've got, like, this pay and play. Yeah. You know, so play, players pay, like they do at amateur level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there are some that kind of take a little bit of money yeah, back. Yeah, they get 25 quid a match. I think that's, I think that's where, where you say we reduce the teams. It's like, you need to look at Super League and Championship are like you your professional slash semi-professional league and, and limit that at, say, 30 teams, but then restructure what happens underneath that so you've got a bit more of a pyramid, a bit more of a... I know me and Dave had a little bit of a chat about this yesterday about do you re, re, does it need to be regionalised more than it is currently because obviously you've got the National Conference League where you can pretty much play anyone from anywhere. and um, But... Who knows what's going to happen? Um, just before we move on, Dave, we've yeah. had Ben's commented about Keithley saying the owner, yeah. Shane Spencer, is a con man that failed the fit and proper test to run the club. He then passed ownership onto his friend and they're now asking for £30,000 for the club. And I think that's a good point about valuation of clubs is that ultimately, rugby league clubs, they're not really, most of them aren't really worth anything because they've got, like, look at Witness, for instance. Obviously, yeah. Witness are in a bit of a takeover situation at the moment. The, the current owners are happy to basically pass it on for free because they've not got any assets. The clubs haven't got... Unless you own your ground, you've not got any assets because the players aren't really worth anything. 
you know, and, 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 and you know, any, any small assets you got aren't really worth anything. So to be asking for money for to I hand over clubs just like... I always wonder where this fit and proper test comes from, though, because quite often the, these stories are uh, uh, they're quite prevalent in rugby league, aren't they, where either business plans get put in place and clubs can't seem to adhere to whatever business plan that they based everything on or, or whatever, or you get these characters, you know, I mean, uh, I'm thinking, right. I'm going back a few years, was it, was it, was it Vaughan who was involved yeah, with this, yeah, who yeah. had a bit of a... Shall we describe it as a shady past? Obviously, mm -hmm. he's out to But I mean, it's always, e I mean, it's like anything though, isn't it? It's like, it's always easy for you to get your brother or your mate or your wife or whatever to, to put their name on it, even their names on the door, even though you're running it. I mean, it's like. It's makes like it when, seem like a pub though, doesn't well, it? Well, it's like, <laughs> when, like, like, when, like when Brian Potter got banned from running Phoenix Club. He got, <laughs> he got, he got Jerry <laughs> to do it, didn't he? Jerry, yeah. Jerry St. Clair. Jerry St. Clair was his fault. Brian, Brian Potter, if you're out there, there's a couple of rugby league clubs that could maybe do with your input. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's it. So I mean, it, it's almost redundant having that sort of thing. I think it's a fascinating discussion and I'm really intrigued to how it'll pan out at Keith Bay. I really hope that they pull through because I've got to be honest, it's one of my favourite places of going. I, I love going to Keith Bay. I know other people might not particularly agree with me, but you know, Cougar Park is, is one of my, uh, my favourite venues. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, the next thing we've got, Championship News. There was quite a, a couple of stories which um, uh, have sort of caught my eye. First of all, today, Rochdale Hornets announcing Lee Mitchell as their skipper. He's turned into a very experienced campaigner these days, Lee Mitchell. Um, he, 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 off at Warrington. Yeah, he had a couple of years out of the game as well, didn't he? A couple <laughs> of seasons out of the game, and then he's, he's come back. He played a bit for Warrington Reserves, and obviously they've got that link with Rochdale. I think it, it came through that he's moved there. Uh, he's a good player, experienced forward. Uh, he, obviously, he, he didn't work out for Warrington, and he played a bit. I think he went cast, didn't he? And, and spent a bit of time at Batley as well, so he's yeah. got a white table as well. Yeah. Did a spell in Australia, I think, as well. So uh, he's, got, he's got a fair bit of experience, and I, I, I like the look of Rochdale uh, next season. I don't think they'll be, they'll be struggling as they did uh, they, last time. They brought some reasonable players in, and I think Carl Forster is trying to get wherever he had going at Whitehaven. Going yeah. At Rochdale, yeah. He's, he's entrusting a lot of those guys that he had over at Whitehaven to his new I Rochdale think, venture isn't it I think what's good about Rochdale this year is there is a blend of youth and experience whereas I think <laughs> in previous in the previous uh, last couple of seasons um, I think they've been too young if you understand what I'm saying Dave I don't think they've had enough experience uh, and that's where they, what, what they've been lacking so I think uh, they'll go, I think they'll go well in 2019 and obviously they, they, they brought some like some household names it's not just Scott Moore obviously they've, they've got uh, Paddy Flynn, who, who had a good, very good try scoring record at Witness. Yeah, but he's been uh, out of the pro game for a couple of years. Yeah, he, has, he was yeah. taking nothing away from Thato Heath where he was, and he was running in tries for them as well uh, in the conference. So, you know, he, I, I agree, excellent mm -hmm. player. Um, and I think that the squad, I actually like the look of Rochdale. I've always got, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Rochdale as well. They're doing some great stuff off the field as well. Um, they're playing against Rochdale Mayfield mm. uh, this coming weekend, which should be Battle great. Battle of the Borough. Battle of the Borough. Uh, and also as well, I noticed I was copied into a photo just before Christmas that um, when I had the conversation with the village in Fiji and there was those links with Rochdale, which I was amazed about, uh. one of the best things I've ever been involved in. Um, but they've sent a load of stuff out now to ro to, to this uh, Sunaka. Mm. Um, load of uh, balls, playing equipment, um, boots, uh, shirts. So well done to Rochdale there. I think they're getting a lot of things right, you know, off the field. So, and I do like going there as well. That's, they're another favourite. <laughs> maybe maybe I could just list um, Dave, all the favourites. Dave's, favorites. Dave's favorites, you know, something like that. Um, I thought it interesting with Featherstone Rovers that they've signed the NRL hooker Cameron King, ex Parramatta, played eleven games at NRL level last season. V very very good. Oh, good for, uh, in my opinion, Dave. Like, is it, it, uh, I know obviously games are hard to come by in the NRL when you when you're at a certain level, and obviously he's been in and out of the Parramatta team, and he's I think he's made just over forty appearances in total in the NRL, but he's goal kicker as well. So hopefully he'll add a bit to to Fev. I I was thinking he, he might have got a Super League gig to be fair, Dave. I thought he might have uh, a Super League club might have had a punt on him. It's a bit of a gamble, though, using one of your quarter spots, isn't it, though? On true, like true. 
Uh, well, well yeah. no, you said you said they some Featherstone Rovers are two half backs, don't they, in the centre yeah. coming over yeah. from Papua New Guinea. Now that is a risk as far well, as yeah, I'm I think concerned. I mean I think you look at we were we were sort of talking about Featherstone last week and we weren't really sure how they were gonna how it was gonna work out for because obviously they're quite thin on numbers and like you say the Papua New Guinea lads aren't here. Are they gonna start slow but then grow into the season? It's gonna be tough. Um it's gonna be tough to get in that top five because you know Look, I mean, a bit like last season where you had the six going into four. This year, you're probably looking at have you got six or seven that have got to go into five. No, you I don't know. I don't think Ferb will get five this year. Aaron's saying, will King end up at Leeds? Dual <laughs> <laughs> Reg. What's their quarters like? On the reverse, <laughs> reverse Dual Reg. Possibly, yeah. Because yeah. they've got, is it Lillia? Lillia, yeah. Lillia, yeah. And they've got uh, Conrad Hurl. Yeah. Merrin. Merrin. Merrin, yeah. Merrin, yeah. Ah, yeah. So. But is there an extra spot then? You've got yeah, I mean, does anybody even know? The, I don't, I'm not sure anybody even knows what the court rules yeah, are do we anymore. Not, may, maybe as well, this Cameron King. Maybe for all we know, he could be on a British passport. Well, yeah, you, you never know. Yeah, but right. I mean, his his qualifications within the game. I mean, he was an Australian schoolboy skipper back in two thousand nine. Um, and come to think of it, next time I see Johnny Pownall at Lee, mm. I'm going to ask him about this fella because uh, he'll have played against him. Um, because it was all part of that tour when the Community oh, Lions yeah, yeah, went yeah. over in 2009 um, but he, he was the skipper of the Australian side in that tour and like you said he's found games at NRL level a little bit difficult to come by yeah. where he's kind of been yeah. in and out of all the clubs that he's been at really um, but, 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 um, but yeah, it could be a good sign to play 11 games last season in the elite, elite mm. com- best competition in the world it's, it's, it's class that it's, and then, then go, go, go to a second tier English club like, you, you might have thought well you might have just uh, stayed at, at that level kind of thing and, and just played New South Wales Cup and Queensland Cup or something like that uh, so he's taking a bit of a gamble uh, coming over here as well and, and testing himself in, in the st- second tier in England I certainly think Featherstone's a very interesting they're going to be a very interesting club to follow because, you know, they're, they're sort of a bit like, you know, you probably wouldn't put them up there, would you, as mm. your top four or five, but if they if they get things going and they get together, you know, they've got it's, a new Australian coach, you know. It's, so it's like, like you said, Dave, with Feb this year, it's all about the Bowas brothers because the, the halves are the most important positions on, on the field. Um, and I, for me, that move could go one or two ways. It could, it could be... A, a master stroke of a of, of signings and, and really lights up the championship, or they might go it, home after a game like or, what happened with a couple of players last season. Well, or or, or they could just uh, just completely flop and, and and it not work out for them unfortunately. So it's it's going to be interesting to to see how they do. But uh, when I when I covered the twenty seventeen World Cup, they were fantastic for Papua New Guinea, but it's obviously different conditions and a different time. I want to move us on because I want to talk Super League previews. Now, the way that I thought this could work is over the next three weeks, if we take four teams yep, and yep. we talk a little bit about the squads, maybe where they've improved. Um, so I'm going to start off one that I, I was looking at in a little bit of detail this morning, Wakefield, because they've been there or thereabouts sort of approaching this top five for the last sort of couple of years, haven't they? We, I should at this point just sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no Mel, Mel, Mel chucked in at the very start of the video. Wakefield Trinity top three. Wow! Oh, so it fits nicely into this yeah. bit then. And so, yeah. um, looking through the squad, it is a decent squad for the money that they're paying out. So you look and they've, they've not made too many changes. They've brought in Danny Brough, of course, which would improve any team. He still knows his way around the rugby league field. Long, long career at uh, Huddersfield. He's still a very clever player. They brought in Craig Copjack, who I've always rated at Salford, gets through a lot of the dirty work and perhaps at times you don't notice him, but it's always those players that you don't notice who you miss. He's a bit a big unit as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. And Chris Chester likes his, 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 a big pack, doesn't he? And, and Copjack will only add to that. And they've also brought in George King from Warrington. Mm. For me, he's been one of the most underrated <coughs> forwards at Warrington, despite the thoughts of, was it um, someone on the council? Oh, the mayor. The mayor, the mayor, got, so the mayor got sacked, actually. He got, he got forced to resign after D- that. Despite his thoughts about but, it. But, yeah, I think, I mean, the thing, I mean, I had a really good chat with Michael Carter at the uh, at the Super League Dream Team, um, and that was actually one of the one of my favourite pieces I wrote last season. And I think they, they seem to have developed, like, a, a good culture at Wakefield. And, and of course... When you've got a coach like that, signing the right players is quite mm. important because you don't want to sign too many because you don't want to disrupt it, but then you don't want to sign the wrong sort of players. Um, and so you look at, you know, Bruff and Kopchak, certainly, you know, you look at both of them players and, and they're adding quality, aren't they, to your, probably to your starting yeah. 13. Um, so 
really it's it's just it's just really impressive how Wakefield have sort of gradually built. They've not done anything, you know, they've not spent loads of money, they've not gone out and signed loads of players, they've just developed players, they've they 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 know what they are. They know what they are. They know what they're about, and um, you know they finished fifth the last two seasons. And of course, if they can finish fifth this season, they'll, they'll be in playoffs, and that'd be an outstanding achievement. And just think, just to mention on yeah. projects like, like we were speaking about before, Wakefield are probably one of the best clubs uh, uh, handling their their own budget at the minute. Michael Garter is obviously a very passionate chairman. He's he's done a, a fantastic job with the budget alongside Chris Chester as well with, with the the recruiting and retention of players as well. I mean, look in the back line. There's lots of tries there last season. Tom Johnston, twenty four games, twenty four tries. Ben Jones Bishop, twenty seven games, eighteen tries. Then you look at the likes of Bill Tupo, uh, fourteen tries in thirty one games. Reese Lynn, who made his England debut, eleven tries, twenty nine games. Um, Two so, who got the dream team, of course. As well. Exactly, yeah, and you know, there's there's other guys as well that stand out. Matty Ash just had a brilliant season Amazing last year. Dream team as well. Kyle Wood has finally become this regular Super League hooker that we always believed he probably could be. Uh, so I like the way they developed. I think though that there's a big question mark over one guy that served him really well over recent years. And that's Danny Kerman. He only played 12 games last year. You look at his injury record over the last two or three seasons. Well, he's handed he's the, cap- he's handed I the think, captaincy. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, he's coming to the last stage of his career now. But I think he, know, he also knows that as well. Uh, yeah, he has handed the captain's arm and over now to, to Jacob Miller. Um, I don't think Kerman will play. I think he'll play a similar number to what he did last year, to be honest. Yeah, reckon hopefully no injuries this yeah, time. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. He's, he's been um, really hampered by him, hasn't he, over the last few years? Yeah, years. he has. Yeah, he's a fantastic player, did Danny Kerman, and he was probably wake over the last six years or so. He's probably been wake, wake, Mr. Wakefield, hasn't he? He's been the standout. He even made. Uh, he was only like one of Wakefield's players who was in the dream team. I think, I think the, re- the, re- the really interesting thing about Wakefield is they've got players that have for whatever reason, not done well at other clubs mm-hmm. and being sort of cast aside. You know, Jacob Miller being a prime example. Yeah, he was a whole lot of Yeah, you know, yeah. like, you know, Riesling's another one. I mean, you could even say Chris Chester himself, you know, he got discarded by LKR after three games one season and they got relegated. And it's like, they've got these players who've perhaps, you know, they're hungry to prove a point and, you know, it's credit to Wakefield that they've developed them. I think Wakefield's back line, as you said, Dave, that's, it's something else, isn't it? And it's going to be interesting to see this year, he'll, he'll go at full-back, will, will, will Joe get his chance at full-back or will it be Ryan Hampshire, obviously? Ryan yeah, he Hampshire. played about half the season last year, did Yeah, because uh, obviously Grix has, Grix has gone, yeah. he's been the long-term full-back. Also, keep your eyes open, though, for Luke Hooley. Now, he's a young full-back, I think he can play wing as well. He's been out at Oldham for the last mm. sort of two seasons, where he's played quite a lot of games at League One level. They were really raving about his performances last year. Um, they've also got some some exciting youngsters that are just about starting to push through at Wakefield now, the likes of Titus Guazzi, who I remember seeing a couple of years ago playing for uh, an England youth side. Uh, massive for his age at that time. I think he was 18 year old and he was just like storming through the defence. Mm-hmm. They played against this Scotland. Um, Scotland couldn't hold him at that, that particular game. So uh, Lee Kershaw uh, as well. He's he's joined Oldham on loan for another season, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he played really well for Oldham last you year. Think, didn't uh, he? Yeah, they think a lot of him as well. So uh, it's got it's exciting times. Well, wait for, you, when you think of Wakefield, you you can only think of him going up, can't you? You, you don't think of him like you used to maybe ten years ago where you thought going to Wakefield it could be, could be an easy win. I think it. I think it's. And now it's it's kind of the opposite. I think the interesting thing is is that the season before last they finished fifth. And so if you sort of feel like, oh, was that a bit of a flash in the pan? You know, our team's going to mm-hmm. figure them out. But then last season they finished fifth yeah. again. So it's like they've clearly got something about. And it. I, I think it's I think it's important for Wakefield fans to, to remain patient. I know, I know Wakefield fans might be wanting a uh, fourth place finish or or obviously as we we had a comment before a third a third place finish or wherever. Uh, I think it's important just to remain patient. You don't always, you don't have to just keep building and building everything. If they can get in the top five again, I think that's a brilliant achievement. Yeah. Well, the, if you think the Challenge Cup would be so, uh, would be perfect for a team like Wakefield, mm. but no doubt we'll probably touch on the Challenge Cup. Oh, you've already yeah. brought it. Oh, I, I, have. I haven't actually, I haven't actually no, said anything about the Challenge Cup. Fair enough, Dave. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. We've done quite a bit of We've done quite a lot of discussions, haven't we? So I thought I'd stick to. Betfred Super League and Betfred League well, One, Betfred Championship this time round. But if you if you think wait wait for the for for the Challenge Cup, that could be a very good target for them this year. Um, Hull Kingston Rovers. Okay, Ken Lennox come out there and says we can go top five. 
I think he's been a bit enthusiastic in fairness. But what do you make of their squad? I'm sort of looking at it here, Quinlan. Go, go on, read it, read it out there, read it out. Go on. I, I'm, well, I don't want to go through no, it. I, 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 I was quite. I think Ulka have got a fairly solid team. I think they could. I think they could surprise a few people. I really like Robin Muller. I thought he was. I thought he was Quality. really good last season. Oh, he's really come on the ball. Yeah, they've, they've got. They've got three decent half-back options in Atkins, drink, uh, Atkins, Drinkwater, and Maguire. The backs, you know, Craig Orr came in last season. I mean, a lot's going to depend on can Ben Crooks be the Ben Crooks that he was at. At it was it was, oh, it was be, good towards the end of the, end of, end of last season. But to be fair, he was well. very very consistent all the last sort of eighteen months. Because even when we were in Super League and struggling yeah. at the wrong end of the table, he was usually one of the top, I'd say, three performers in the league side. Last season, I thought he found a different level of consistency of Championship. It's good. And, and he did well going back, didn't he? Going back to Hull Kingston. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, when the, when the squad numbers were released, I, I was quite surprised. Cause I thought. I thought Kane Lynette would have been uh, uh, well have a starting jersey and uh, I don't know m- numbers don't mean a great deal but when when you're looking at the strongest 17 on paper will does that hint at Lynette possibly playing in the back row rather than the, the centre position I mean you look at you look at the team that Ulka have got you know can Kainos become a prolific centre obviously at Leeds he's never quite had a regular run of games. Can he be a prolific try centre? There's points in Craig Hall, there's points in Ryan Shaw. Well, you so, mentioned Craig Hall there. I mean, what was it? He played eight games at Old Kingston Rovers last year, 14 tries he scored. Yeah. Which he just carried on. I think it was something like 34 tries he scored all through last season. You know, and you look at, you know, they've got they've got Tompkins, they've got they've got Greenwood, they've got Lynette, you know, Nick Scruton. Do you, you not know? feel Tompkins is a bit of a spent force these no, days? No, I, I still think he, no. he can do a job. They've got Danny Andy, of course, who missed all that season. I think Joel Tompkins is more of a middle now than a, a back rower. Well, you, you uh, may be playing at 13. But, yeah, you? but obviously, well, Iraq, he's got 13. Yeah. Um, so it, it is going to be interesting because I, I'm surprised that, that obviously Garbert, I thought he might have had a starting shirt, but obviously he's an impact player off the bench. So They've, they've got the six jumper, which is free. Does this no, it's retired that, six, isn't it? Isn't it? And Roger Miller, Miller, Miller. Yeah. Right, okay. but I think which I, I, I don't. I, it's pointless retiring shirts, but we'll get on. To what that. What's really interesting also about Old KR, and I've seen this mentioned, is obviously they released Clarkson and Donaldson. Yeah. And obviously they've gone to Cass and Leeds, and obviously that's a bit of a strange Cass one. Cass and Clark. Cass and Charlie, yeah, but it's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Because you look at players and you think, well, Old KR, if they're releasing players. You're almost thinking, well, why are they releasing them if they're then going on to sign for for you know teams who you would expect to finish above? Yeah. I, again, I think um, I think it's fair play to them players, you know, and the fact that they're still willing to be given a shot. And yeah. obviously, in the in the form of Donaldson, I mean, he's obviously worked his uh, worked himself to the bone, hasn't he? When he's gone mm-hmm. in at Leeds, he's earned himself a contract there. And, and to be honest, I mean, Leeds finished below Hull Kingston Rovers last year, so yeah. are we saying Phil that, huh? Phil Brown saying Hulk are definitely top eight. Definitely top eight. I mean, I mean, obviously yeah. top eight. I mean, top no, eight would be good. It's top eight would be decent. I mean, it's progression. Not a progression above last season, of course. It certainly will, but it's it's going to be a difficult one for for all cars finishing the top eight just be, just because of the teams above them. I think they might, they could they could possibly scrape into into the top eight, maybe eight for seven. I think I've said it. I've said it before. What you want is, and I said it, I think I said it last week. What you want is you want to go as deep into the season as possible. With enough, with plenty of teams who can still have the fifth place mm. in reach, because what you don't want to happen is you don't want the top five to run off, and it be like pointless, like you know, do you know what I mean? The pointless seven or eight last games because the top five is decided. Uh, but I think that's what will happen. I think we'll just be down to like two, maybe two or three clubs will be uh, after that top mm. five. It's going to be interesting. Uh, obviously, we are previewing, but it's going to all, also going to be interesting to see what this field do. I mean, there's tries there in this old Kingston Rovers lineup as well. Adam Quinlan got 14 last season. We've already mentioned Craig Hall. Jimmy Kinehorse actually has a really good try scoring record. If you look at his game to try mm-hmm. ratio, the uh, Ben Crooks can score points. What I, what I like to uh, who I liked to look at last season was Junior Byway. Uh, well, I, I didn't even mention Junior Byway. Yeah. I mean, he got 11 yeah. tries last year. I think it was 19 appearances, 20 appearances that a, he made last time. A real powerful player as well, but an explosive player. And, and, Makes good yards as well. And then I wonder case. whether we're going to get the Catalans Josh drink water or whether we're going to get the Lee Josh drink water. I suppose it depends on the, what the I, I, guess, I guess the good. Does. I guess the good thing about that situation for Hull KR is they've got two other Super League halfbacks, haven't they? They've got Atkin and Maguire. I think the other good thing is he's only a one year contract as well, so it keeps yeah. it should so, keep it. You know, so it's like if Drinkwater's naff for whatever reason, 
then he's not going to get a game because they've got Atkin and, um, and Maguire. So we're thinking possibly, are we thinking an improved season for Old Kingston or was it? Definitely, but looking at, looking at the, the squad at first glance, definitely. Mm. Uh, well, we never mentioned Mitch Garbutt either. I Mitch actually always thought he was quality at least. Oh, his quality. All, and all the, the other, other people that maybe the, don't the only, him as The other thing is with Mitch Garbutt, there's no doubt in his quality, he's a, he's a fantastic front rower, but it's just his injuries but when he can get out on the field. That, that's what we struggle with uh, in the last 18 months or so at Leeds, so it, it just depends if, it, if, he can, if he can get 20, 20, 20 to 24 games out of him a season, uh, it'll, it'll be a, a good signing. Um, I want to move over to Castleford, because I mean you, you, you know the big news there is obviously Luke Gale's probably out mm. for the season, they're telling us. Um, They've got the same issue regarding half-backs and have they got the depth of quality. But, I mean, we had a conversation, didn't we? Truman, obviously, had his breakout year last year. was was brilliant when he first came into the team. They've got some consistency going. They've got the likes there of Ben Roberts, who mm, I always think he's a bit inconsistent, to be honest. Um, but Jamie Ellis is still there. And then Corey Aston, who's done the uh, he's done the hard yards around the Championship, if we prefer to well, say. For, first things first, I think. But Luke Gale... Struggle with injuries last season, only made 15 appearances in all comps for, for Cass. So I think it's not a bigger blow as it possible as some people are making out. If, it, if, it, if that's fair to say, Dave, because I yeah. think if you look last season, Truman did a fantastic job in, in the absence of uh, Luke Gale. He stepped up to the plate. 28 really, games he played. Yeah, really, really made a, a good name of himself. So I think uh, oh, Truman's the main one uh, out of them four. He, he's going to be the star of the show. The team's going to be built around Truman. The interesting thing is now, Ben Roberts or Jamie Ellis, for me, have got have got to step up, take their game to another level because Tr- Truman's the runner, isn't he? He needs uh, that that mouth and organising next to him like like a Luke Gale normally does. And to be fair to to be fair to, to Roberts and Ellis, they played a very similar number of games last mm. term. So. I think the thing is is people are talking about obviously replacing Luke Gale, aren't they? And obviously there's this talk about him, you know, him coming off the salary cap and, and what have you. But where where do you go to get another half back of, of, of sufficient quality at this point of the seat you know, mm. at this point of the year? I mean are they really is the are you really is there really a half-back available that's going to be better than Ellis or Roberts? I don't think there would be. And I think it's probably a little... We were sort of discussing this the other day. It's probably a little unfortunate for Drinkwater that he signed for LKR because he might have been able to play LKR off with Castleford and maybe get a deal there. But, Who knows? Yeah. Well, he might have already done that. Yeah. He might have had a little bit, little, little bit in more between uh, yeah, Cass yeah, yeah. and got his wages wrapped up a little bit. But, yeah. uh, but I, I'm with you, James. Not, I, I can't think of anyone in Australia, New Zealand or... or over in, in England as well for for an half back to be honest who, who's capable of well no, who's, 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 who's like top class especially when you consider you know with all due respect to Jared Summit you wouldn't have expected Wigan to have picked picked him up and it's like you know that that may be you know and, and I'm not saying Summit's Sam, a bad player but you know that perhaps goes to show the you know how, how hard it is to find the you know, decent quality half back at this time. To be but fair, I think somebody's seen something in Samut though, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not disrespecting Samut whatsoever, but ultimately he was a championship half back last season, and now the, the Super League champions have signed him. Mm. So it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, again, there's tries. I expect there to be tries this season coming from the likes of Peter Matotia. Thought he was That's, really, really good last oh, year. Was, yeah, I was just about to mention Peter Matotia. Obviously, he was starting the season at Lee. Was phenomenal in the championship, wasn't he? He was, he was by far that standout star in the championship last season. And then he went to Cass, made a bit of an impact at Cass. Um, but I'm expecting big, big, real big things. And the fact that Greg Eden only played about half the games last year and still ended up with 18 tries suggests yeah. that you stick him on wing, he's going to get you 20 tries if he plays anywhere near the amount could, of games. You could get a QLT back and play him in arms, Dave. Yeah. We've had a few comments on Cass. Uh, Aaron saying if, if Corey Aston has the right head on, he can step up. He's I, come on massive. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. I've always thought that Corey Aston has had a lot of potential. Um, well, it's one of them, isn't it, Dave? I mean, why have him if you're not going to throw him in at this point? Surely this is why you have a you have a squad. You know, if you've got a problem, you throw him. And I guess this is the point that Neil's making. Is Neil saying if Cassford are allowed to take Gale off the cap, then the system is a joke. 
Cats have a squad and an academy to deal with injuries. It's why clubs have squads. And to be fair, you know, okay, yeah, in a salary cap sport, when one of your top earners is out for the season, it's difficult. But then, like I say, why bother having players 24, 25, 26 if, when you get an injury, they're not going to play? But you could always deregister yeah, them, though. Yeah, that was yeah. always, that's always been in the rules, hasn't it? But, you could deregister players. But the, the thing that, that I, like, you've got three... Like half backs, well, not four half backs, but, but Truman's going to be a starter, it's obvious. So you've got three half backs there in Roberts, Ellis, and Aston. That's more than enough mm. to, to cover an injury, do you know what I mean? It's it's not as though like, you've only got one half back and they're having to play Millington. True, could play Millington though. Well, Millington's done a little yeah. stint at six, and he's got the hands of a six, yeah, exactly. hasn't he? He's got some beautiful passing off. I mean, you'd, you'd imagine yes. that Daryl Powell could get anyone to do. You know, if there's one uh, yeah. coach who's going to be able to get something out, I mean, like, look at Truman, you know, the truck Truman in last year through necessity more so than anything else, and, and you know, look how he did. So, why, well, who's it, to say that Corey Aston couldn't do the same? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be Roberts and Truman, won't it? And I, and I, don't, I, can't, I can't see Cash bringing anyone in. I like, the look of, I like the look of the, the Cash pack, though. I've always uh, fancied them for about three or four years, to be honest, because they, they've got some, some really good players there, haven't they? Like, so Liam Watts they brought in last season. Paul McShane, he's Mr. Consistency. We've already mentioned Grant Millington, who's one of my favourite props in Super League. Your back row of Oliver Holmes, Mike McMeekin. Who, McMeekin was a little bit off last year, wasn't he? But I'm sure he can get back to where he was. Well, I think, I mean, I, I mean, I think Clarkson, I know he's only on trial at the moment, but he's another good example of a player who you can see Powell, Darryl Powell getting out, you know, getting a bit more out. Of, he's you know, a similar a, a to like Butler, Fo- isn't he? A bit like Foster, a bit like they did with Alex Foster, yeah. you know, a bit like they did with Matt Cook, I think. You know, they, they obviously they've obviously played a certain way, Cass, and you know, strengthening that squad year on year, but developing the players so, sort of similar to how Wakefield have done, but perhaps a bit more spectacularly. Um, Watts was a really good signing for him last season, and big you know, fan of Liam Watts. Uh, I think he's uh, f- fantastic. Junior Moore struggled with injuries as well, uh, and J- Jesse Senil failed last season. So it's going to be interesting to see if they, if they can keep the fitness up. Castle, Castle have one at best. Yeah, Senil failed, played 22 games last yeah. year, so he probably missed about 10 games yeah. over the course of the year. Um, Junior Moore's actually played 25 times, Did which I, I was surprised when I looked at that, because I, I thought the same yeah. as you. I thought, oh yeah, but he played... Uh, he played a lot more off the bench last year, yeah. so I think he, he made 18 of his appearances Huge off, player. off the bench. Huge player. Why are you yeah. trying to tackle him? <laughs> <20, laughs> do you think as well? Kilos? Do you think as well this could be the real breakout year for someone like Will Mayer, who has also gone round in the Championship, prop forward? Uh, he needs to start pushing yeah. forward now, doesn't he? Well, why, why, why Aston, to be fair? I think it's it's getting to that stage now where Will, Will Mayer or Will Mayer. Uh, he deserves his uh, deserves his crack at Super League. He's played a few times, hasn't he? We've played played most of the season. Uh, Halifax, he was like 18th man, 19th man, mm. uh, <laughs> quite a lot of times for for Cass last season. And we talked about some of the younger team or the younger players that uh, Wakefield are bringing through. I'm quite excited by this clutch of young players. I mean, the headline by Kieran Gill, who again is another one of these guys who's been around. Another one that's been at Oldham and scored lots of tries at Oldham as well at League One level, but Callum Turner made his debut last season. Yeah, Gill's on one well, well, isn't yeah, he? Gills this year, that's on one, yeah. But even so, he's got a squad number, hasn't he? Yeah, so yeah. they could always could bring him back. back. I think. I think yeah. the thing with Cass, I think if think if you look at Cass compared to Wakefield, I think you know you were saying before about Wakefield. You know they don't need to be impatient and push up. I think you're probably looking at Castleford now. They've been up and around there, aren't they, for a few years? But they've not really got anything to show for it. Yeah, okay, they got the, the league leader shield and, and what have you. But perhaps Castleford now are at the stage where you know you need to be winning some silver. You know the Challenge Cup mm. or, or, or getting to another grand final, maybe winning the grand final because th- it feels like it, it feels like this is like a, a real purple period for, for, for Castleford, and it'd be nice for them to come out of it with, with something you know meaningful to show for it. So, are we thinking Castleford top five? Are they going to make this top five this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think? Wakefield top eight, Old Kingston Rovers top eight from the clubs we looked at so far. No, I think, I think Wakefield. Four, I, think, um, I think Wakefield will go top eight. I'm not sure about KR, but I think, yeah, I think Wake, Wake is top eight. Rovers, Boston four, unfortunately. We've got one more club to look at. Uh, Sorry for this breaking week. hearts. <laughs> well, we're never right anyway. Yeah, so well, we'll yeah, it probably means Old KR will probably win it, yeah. win some silverware this year. No, I said that one. And the last club that we're going to look at from a Super League perspective, preview wise, uh, this week is Catalan's Dragons. Now, you know, they've. Uh, the talk of rugby league. Brought in 
quite a number of players. If they don't play in the Challenge Cup, then they're going to have a few free weekends, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're going to be a bit fresher than maybe some of their other opponents that they're going to be playing. I guess the most interesting thing is they've signed three Englishmen. Um, you know, in, in Matty Smith, Whitley and uh, and Tompkins. Well, if you look at the top thirteen, there's only a couple of players that would be eligible to play for uh, play for France. So, are they not going back against what they were set up for? Well, or am I, I putting my anti-expansion head on? I, I can see a... Drew drawing daggers. Yeah. Up. <laughs> I think it's a fair point, mate. They seem to go in. They seem to go in peaks and troughs with this, don't mm. they? I think if you look at Catalan over the Super League area, sometimes they've had teams that have been littered with French players, and then sometimes they've had teams where they've had a lot of Australians, a lot of Englishmen, and, and certainly you're looking at that team now, and and you're like, there's only really a a, a couple of French players who you yeah. expect to be. Starting for France. So let's take that top thirteen then. You know, so they've named Tony Gigo as their number one. Who for me is a fantastic yeah, player. And brilliant to watch. How he's going to mix in with Sam Tompkins will be the interesting thing. Well, do to we watch think? Do we think Tompkins is going to play six with yeah. Smith uh, at halfback? I I would suggest that as well. To be honest. Or would Gigo then, play in the centres? No, Gigo will be full back. Tompkins at halfback. Then you've got Remy Casti who has he announced his international retirement. Yeah. So he's not going to be playing for France anytime soon, <laughs> then is he? Um, uh, Benjamin Garcia is the oh, only yeah. other guy. I, I really rate Benjamin Garcia. I think he's a fantastic And player. that's all of them in the top 13. So we mentioned the French players. Oh, go on, go on, go on. But if, you go, if right. you go further, if you go further into the roster though, you have got Julien Bosquet who's been uh, a fine interchange prop forward for him for several years. Mikhail Simon who did a, a really good stint at Wakefield. Benjamin Julien, who I thought was a model of consistency for him last year, over twenty nine games. It was, it was probably that was probably his best season to date. I think. I think it, I think he's improved um, vastly since he's gone back to France and, and to Catalans since he's moved from Warrington. Then you had Jason Bettieri as well, who's also been a bit of a style war now, isn't he? Yeah, it's it been is. for that long. I think the thing with Catalan is obviously they got a bit of grief, didn't they? Because you know that, the million pound game season and stuff, and I think they're almost stuck in this sort of. A bit like the whole franchise licensing thing, aren't they? They're stuck in this thing where they're expected to develop players, but then at the same time, they they don't want it. They can't afford to be relegated, and it's like you know, do you know what I mean? And it's like if the quality French players aren't there, um, you know, maybe that they, maybe this is why they've got to go this way. I mean, and it's worth noting that there are there are decent French players at other clubs in the Super League now. There are there are the up five. There's, 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 there is decent Felicia. players. I mean, there's even decent players further down this roster as well, to be fair. I mean, Alex de Costa got on about, played about half the game. To, to, decent to be fair, um, Mikel Gudimond play, playing in the Challenge Cup final on a part time wage. Only 21 years old. Belmas so. as well played a few last season. Yeah, five yeah. games for Belmas. To be fair to Catalans. as well. Yeah, to, to be fair to Catalans, they, they do produce. The uh, players, and I know what, obviously all the players in France are one of us Catalans because they want to play Super League. Um, but the, they did, they have had the fair share of, of really really good talented young players. I mean, I th- I mean I always say that I think Super League's at the point now where it needs two French teams because I think that would help. You know, like you're saying, uh, whereas at the moment Catalan have almost got the pick of the French players. I know Toulouse have got some quality French players as well. But if you put Toulouse in Super League, now all of a sudden Catalan are thinking, well, actually, if we don't, if we don't sign mm. and keep on and play a Lucas Al, I mean, I know Albert won't leave because he's he's connected there. But if they don't play him, then he can go off and play for Toulouse in Super League without having to leave France. And I think that might, I think that's always been my argument with the French team thing is, you know. If you're going to have one, yeah. you need to have two now because it's been that long. Oh, but then will you say you need to have three? No, no, but you know, no, but I mean, rather than league? having one, you either have none or you have two, in my opinion. Um, and because I think that would help, because then the the because at the moment, you know, you're looking at Catalan and all the pressure's on them to develop the French players, isn't it? But at the same time, they've got to be competitive. Whereas if you've got to lose in the mix as well, all of a sudden you've got double the number of French players <coughs> potentially playing Super League. Um, I, I also want to just chuck in though, why is it Catalan's Dragons are now, they've never been playing in our league over here. Oh, no, no, you won't say it, why are they not in RFL? Go on. So why are they not in RFL? <laughs> <laughs> because it's a there's a French Federation and they're a member of the French Federation. Why should they be playing in our competition though? Well, that's, if, a, that's a different If thing. they're not a member of the RFL. 
I'm, 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 I'm going to keep bringing that drum. Fair, I'm sorry if it fair. gets as boring as Drew going on about Wigan every week. No, I think so it's a fair... So we're trying not to have as many mentions, even though we slip one in. I think it's a fair... Uh, I think it's a fair, fair argument, Dave. I think, I think everything's a bit of a... It's all gone a bit messy, hasn't it? I think uh, certainly the last 10 years or so, the way rugby league's gone, it's all got very messy. There's not really a clear... You know, why are Catalans in Super League? Yeah. You know, why are Toronto in Championship? You know... Why, you know, do you know what I mean? Why are we talking about Barcelona for the Magic Weekend? Well, uh, you know, whatever you want to, whatever it is, really? it's like, yeah, there's almost like no, no, there's no thought out plan. I thought the reason why we had Catalan was to develop the France team so England had competitive international. Yet here we are, 12, 13 years later, and it's like, well, that's not happening. So it's like, well. The thing is, as well, they need to play. I, it's like when, when, there was talented French players who just didn't play in the Awesome Internationals. They didn't play in the European Championships just because like, they wanted a longer off-season. Mm. It's like, well, what's... It's kind I, of defeating the obvious. I think, I think the, pro- the problem you've got at the moment is that there's a lot of stuff going on. That we'd, It's almost like we're just throwing some stuff up in the air and hoping some of it works without there being a little bit of a plan as to, well, what's the... You know, it's like a bit like the Belgrade thing in the Challenge Cup. Like, no disrespect to Red Star Belgrade. But what is the objective of this? What is the objective of them being in the cup? What are we working towards? I that's a question I can't answer. I hope we win it. And that and that's and I hope and we get I hope we get to Wembley. Well, they've got two USA internationals. So I, hope, I, hope, I hope Red Star play the long haul in the Challenge Cup final twenty nineteen. <laughs> Longhorns have got to get through a lot late for sure. <laughs> uh, my mate Craig Savage will make sure they don't, I'm sure. <laughs> it's, uh, but it, you know, do you know what I mean? I think we just got at the point where, at the moment, you know, if you look at the last 10, 15 years, even like going back to Gateshead and Celtic Crusaders and like all these things are happening, but ultimately, if, if you sit down and look at where we are compared to 20, 25 years ago, it's not really, it's not really advanced in any way. If you compare it to fifty years ago, it's not advanced. And also, it's like all we do is we turn, we tie ourselves in knots, we alienate people, and we don't actually get anywhere anyway. So it'd be nice, it'd be nice if, in my opinion, I think you've got to sit down and look at Catalan and say, right, we're going to persist with Catalan being in the Super League or in an RFL competition or whatever you want to call it. Then we need to have to lose it. Well, we need I, another French team. I agree to it, bro. Or just say to Catalan, look, we've had enough now. You go back to the French League and let's try and grow a competitive French League. Are we now heading to that situation? I to come in, into Super League. Are we now heading into that situation, though, where there is a risk of the certain teams that maybe, from a, a financial point of view or from a logistic point of view or from a, a sponsorship point of view, that... Would look better in Super League and they'll pull yeah, the drawbridge but, but, again. But this is always part. This is part of the problem, though, isn't it, Dave? Is that Super League was started to become an, a new attractive competition, and the perception was, rightly or wrongly, that a Manchester team or a, you know, or Paris would be a much more attractive than say a Witness or or a Keighley or, yeah, or, or whatever. Yeah. And and I think the problem you've got is rugby league hasn't decided what it wants. It hasn't decided. Well, does it want? The franchise clubs and the big city clubs, or does it just want to have the team? You know, you look at, like I said, I did the article before, which is on the site now. If Give you look, at, if you look at the, the, I think they look, the initial proposal for Super League was fourteen teams, and one of those teams was Halifax. Now, if you were having that conversation now, Halifax would be nowhere near it. Yeah. And likewise, Warrington were going to be merged with Witness, whereas now. If you were talking about a franchise league, Warrington would be a standalone. They had a Calder club that they... Yeah. yeah but it's like if you, United, you know, they and, remember and, as well. And you look at, say, you know, Wigan and St. Helens. So, Wigan and St. Helens, two of the biggest clubs, two of the most successful clubs, two of the most iconic rugby league clubs. Seven miles apart, they could have merged them and all. Well, well and, and that's, that's, the, well, that's, the thing, that's the thing, though, Dave. Where, where, you know, where, where do you stop? Because if you, create, if you create this league, and it's like you're saying, well, actually, we don't want Castleford because it's only a small town. Well, St. Helens is only a small town. And then... It's the 79th largest town in England. But then, but then what if you get to a point... What, where, what happens when you get to a point where you've got... Just because you we're sat here in Warrington, which is Warrington the 30th. No, no, I mean Warrington no, I mean the same. No, I mean Warrington the same as well. What happens when you get to a point where Castleford, LKR, Huddersfield, whatever, they've all been punted out, so you've got Toronto, New York and whoever in. What happens when there's only Wigan Saints, Leeds and Warrington left and they say, well, actually, we don't want Wigan and Saints anymore because we want 
don't know, Moscow magpies or whatever. What happens then? You know what they could do? They could maybe... This is where Red State Belgrade comes in, isn't it? Maybe they, maybe there's a long-term thought for them. Well, this is what I mean. I think the thing is with rugby league, for it to really grow, surely the Fren a French league's got to grow to be a competitive standard. Yeah, but I don't know. And if, Toron think, if Toronto... I don't, you know, think, I don't think Catalan is going back to the French league or do it go, to be fair. I genuinely don't. There's, uh, there's another thing that I want to raise here. Do you reckon that Rob Elston, when he gets up in the morning, gets up out of his NRL bedspread, switches off his NRL... Clock. NRL? NRL clock. Why yeah. NRL? Because he seems obsessed with NRL. <laughs> We're headed, we'll be coming NRL 2. We might as well change the Super well, League logo. Well, it's really NRL Division yeah. 2. Uh, there was an interesting thing. A former Super League uh, CEO said to me once that he thinks that Super League should have rebranded to NRL Europe. And I don't think that would be a terrible idea now. Because what you could do is you could set... Because I think the problem you've got is we're taking over the English leagues, the English leagues with all this expansion stuff whereas if you a bit like what Super League was meant to be where you break away have NRL, NRL Europe and basically say right look if you want to apply to have a franchise in NRL Europe you can do but Super League's going to stay as it is Championship's going to stay as it is so then Wigan have got that decision to make well do we want to play in NRL Europe or do we just want to play in Super League and then Cat, you know you'd have Catalan would play in NRL Europe Toronto could go in NRL Europe and do it that way that's what I perceive. That's what I see as a solution. You could even have the point where yeah, if, well, if Wigan went so, in, just listen, so, if Wigan went into NRL Europe, Wigan could have like a reserve team that played in Championship or or, so or even work up to Super League. I think I honestly think that would be the best solution. I mean, I know obviously we've got this hashtag New Beginnings coming out for Super League, so this is where it's all under. There's a lovely video which they've put together, which I hashtag New Beginnings until the next New Beginning. Hashtag, hashtag new until, beginning until, uh, 2019. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> until new year in 2020. No, to be fair though, I mean, like I really like the video that they put out because it's got rid of the Brownlee brothers. It's got yeah. rid of um, you know just people talking. The Brownlee brothers don't half get some stick on this show. Just talking about the game. It's actually showed some game footage, which yeah. is what if you can't sell rugby league off its own footage, you've got no then chance. You've no chance. You know, I mean, even even Eskimos sell uh, sell ice, don't they? <laughs> You so, sell rice to the Chinese. <laughs> um, but, yeah, let's have a look, because, I mean, we did get asked um, about some of these uh, innovations, shall we call them, that have been brought in. So, interchanges down from 10 to 8, I agree with that. So, I'm not qualms with that at all. No, yeah. Um, Do you think, just just on that interchanges, I'm, I don't have this opinion, and I don't think it'll make much of a difference, but I've seen a bit of concern that does that mean that because you reduce the changes from ten to eight, that all the players are going to continue moulding into the same shape and the same. What body is a temple? Yeah, you know, all all be the same robotic athletes rather than you know you're not going to have a a Frank Latine type player who can come on for ten minutes. Yeah, but what you, you, don't see, you, don't see, you don't see them anymore, do you anywhere? We're, no, well, that's what I mean. But I, room, I don't, right? I don't, I don't, seen... I don't agree. It's just I've seen that opinion often. Like, like, on, in, on it, like in rugby league, for example, uh, rugby union, sorry, for example, you, like even the you look at test matches. I don't, I don't watch rugby union, but you look at test matches. And think, Who's here, rugby? Do you know what I mean? You, you How can you say that if you don't watch it? No, you look at them sometimes. Rugby, look, you look at them sometimes. Rugby yeah, union, you know I think, what I mean? I think rugby union is far more inclusive than rugby league because I think. I think there's a, there's a place in rugby union for people of all sorts of sizes and body types. Whereas I think in rugby league we have been certainly the last ten years everyone's turned into yeah. the same six foot three, you know, athletic. James, is just, James is just jealous because he's five foot one. Well, yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, out of the three of us, you're the only one who get, uh, get anywhere you near get a game. Anywhere, yeah. I, 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 well, we could play rugby in your meeting. Yeah, we, we could play. You know, I'd be, I'd be a flan. I'm, I'm sure people have called me worse things. I could be a flan. Rhymes with flan. And uh, I could just stand on the wing out of the way. So, yeah, and that's why they got pockets in. Yeah. In, in, but anyway, no, I'm not having a go at rugby because obviously I'm doing a bit of work in that. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag cold sir. Cold sir for them. Yeah, um, but, uh, yeah. What do you make of these with the stopwatch with the stopwatches? Uh, no, yeah, is it is it you is say? it you's doing it, Dave? We thought maybe it yeah. might be you. You'd pop up in the corner of the screen on Sky well, with your stop clock. Do you know what? Instead, I can instead of like the old Sky, what was it? The meter maker or something? Or, well, I like a little thing. Yeah, you know, but be you just pop it up in the corner. Do you think? Do you think they'll have like? Do you think? Do you think they'll have like a? Do you think they'd have like a countdown clock on the big screen at the match? So as soon as the ball goes out, it'll start. <laughs> We could get sponsorship from Channel 4, you know, Channel 4 Super League. I, I think it's going to get really confusing, you know. 
What were they clock or? Yeah, because here, according to what was was put in the press release, the last five minutes of each fixture will see the clock stopped automatically after a penalty goal or a drop goal if it goes out of play on a conversion as well or after a try if a team chooses not to take the conversion attempt get very confusing here I reckon it's no wonder that they need to bring it in in pre-season is it because they'll need to know when to stop the clock (laughs) does that mean if you catch a conversion in the in goal that the clock doesn't stop See, exactly, you've, you've come up with a question there. We don't know. Because you, you, in theory, I suppose you could just catch the ball yeah, and then just walk back. I believe there's a couple of games that they're going to try in pre-season, isn't there, with uh, yeah, the well, Rafin as well. If you, if, you, if you kick a ball, I don't think it's going to just loop over and just stop in, in goal. Well, I don't, if you were kicking from the touchline, I think you could catch the ball in goal from a conversion. Yeah, but if it goes over, it'll be a conversion, won't it? And if, yeah, it, and if it's not, you just start again, won't you? Well, so, anyway. so again, it's chucking up... He's chucking up more questions than yeah, supposed yeah, to yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. If these two are asking the questions, God knows where everybody we'll, we'll else is We're sending to trial it out, I think, in the next week. Go on, man, I'll try it. Um, Take, don't forget your stop what? I don't like the fact that we've got Golden Point coming into regular league games. Why does that have yeah, to be a I winner and a loser? I don't, I, I don't see the point in that. I think the other thing for me that bothers me more so than anything else is that it's one reel for Super League and then... You know, championship's different. So we have draws in championship, well, and we still have draws in Super League. To be fair, there was always a differentiation, wasn't there? Well, the, I think between Super League and Championship, because if, if yeah, you go back a few years, point system, there was the point I think, system. I think the thing, there, the, the, the thing with the golden point is that if it goes ten minutes and there's no point, they're going to call it a draw anyway. So why not just call it a draw after eighty minutes? You could be risking player welfare in those 10 minutes. So they, could, they could play an extra 10 minutes for no reason I, whatsoever. I don't see the big issue. And then you're going to get coaches the following week saying, oh, well, we had to play 90 minutes last week and they only had to play <laughs> 80 minutes. And that, you know, I can see that happening. We'll, we, we can have a sweet stake yeah. on it. will be the first I, 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 don't, I don't see the big issue in it, to be fair. I, I, I want to be bothered if the draw stayed and I'm, I'm not bothered if, if since Golden Point's been brought in. It's only 10 minutes at the end of the day. I know, I know it, it could be slightly worse for the players, obviously, because they, they could potentially play an extra 10 minutes, could play an extra one minute. Maybe you get another um, interchange chucked in, though, which might help uh, alleviate. <laughs> well, again, that, that's another question. Um, but they have it in football now, don't they? You get an so, extra substitution in extra yeah. time. Uh, so, I, I, I don't see the big... I think it, can, it could possibly make it more entertaining. Uh, we, we, does it does it make drop goal specialists a bit more valuable? Yeah, that, that, that's what I was saying the other week. Oh, like if you had a Danny Richardson, it's, it's perfect, isn't it? Really, because Danny Richardson. No, well, he's going to have to hurry up his goal kicking, isn't it? Because he t- a very tech longer than eighty seconds. But we're, we're, ball down. I've, 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 said, I've, the clock, I've, I've, I've said it a few times, but worst worst one I've seen is Christian and Inu at Witness. No, he, Danny Sickles is the worst one. He took. At least two, two, yeah, two and a half minutes. Witness didn't score that many chances. Ah, you're, <laughs> you're being, you're being too modern. You know the likes of Jimmy Leggard back in nineteen sixty, that nineteen fifties, and uh, showing uh, your age there, Dave. Uh, Colin Tyra, my granddad used to tell me all about Colin Tyra at Liam Wigan. He used to take forever. He used to be able to go and uh, have a cup of tea, get a cup of Bovril. Uh, and still get back, and he'd still not kick the goal. There's all kinds of legend about that, you know. Um, so apparently. We're going to be having no longer than eighty seconds on a kick at goal. We're going to but be it's a- from that. It, but when does that start? Does that start as soon as the ball's grounded? Does it start when they put the ball on the cone? Does it start? Should it start, it start from the try? Then that would speed things up. Oh no! Because you, you, you can you can already go on. Wait, well, you can imagine what's going to happen. You, sco- you oh, score a try, and you're going to lob the ball into the crowd, and then that'll be twenty seconds, and the kicker will have to be like, oh, get the ball, get on the cone. <laughs> go, if, if you score a try, this thing I do is is if work corners at grounds are smack ball out at corner at grounds. <laughs> someone's got a ball boy has got to go well, fag it out to the ground. I'll pin down the ball boy who's got the ball yeah. so hey, don't, don't chuck that in. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it, it, it could end up where your ball boys you must you'd have to put your ball boy on salary cap. Yeah. Well yeah because I I've seen it at a few football grounds where uh, you know where they have athletics tracks around the pitch. And I was at a game earlier this season where the manager of the home team, they were winning 1-0, and he basically told the ball boys to go and sit down because obviously whenever the ball was going out of play, they were just chucking the ball back on, whereas when it was going out of play on the athletics track, it was taking ages to fetch the ball back. So we're taking these, we're taking these um, sort of actions, if you like, in Super League to speed the game up 
because uh, we're going to have a 30 second shot clock on a drop out, 35 second uh, on a Why scrum. does it have to be different though, Dave? Why is 35? Why, why, why is it not just 30 seconds? Yeah, why can't they just say it's 30 seconds? It's a typical rugby league thing, is to just make it complicated for no reason. Um, so, I mean, you could, and as well, what are we going to What are we going to happen? There's going to be new things coming from the crowd, isn't there? It's a 35 second warning, ref! 35 second warning! Well, I mean, the, the thing you always get people um, saying about, um, you know when they're having conversions and people are moaning about them time wasted and the clock stopped? Because that's what they do, don't yeah. you? You get that in the crowd all the time where people are like, oh, hurry up, and it's like, well, the clock stopped, it doesn't make any difference. Um, I, I've got to mention uh, an old coach at Lee here uh, in uh, Paul Terzis, Australian, came over, was coach at Lee just after Ian L. Ward's first spell in charge, and um, he actually wanted the clock to be stopped every time there was a try scored and it not to go back on until the kick off because then everyone was getting a full 80 minutes of rugby rather than having uh, to uh, wait around and whatever so I mean I don't know what that would have done with like timings and stuff we're already up to I think the pro, I think um, obviously the issue is is that and I, I'm sure I've seen it on Twitter I think it was Bilko on Twitter who put about how how long the grand final was this year compared to five years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you know it's like as soon as there's a dropout, you can bet your life play will go down. Treatment will come on. That, you know, and that that that'll, you need to eradicate that. It's like if you go down, it's like it's play on. You know, if you've gone down on the pits there, it's play on. And then see how many people go down. I think I was at a game. I can't remember what game it was last season. Where was that a game where someone's gone down in back play? You know, feigning an injury or something, or claiming to be injured, and then the refs just played on, and all of a sudden he's miraculously made a recovery and, r and ran back into the defensive line. Well, I think that you'd, you'd actually you'd actually catch the players that are just swinging the lead, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. And and the fact you can't tell me that it, that on every drop out, I'm I, I'm dead I'm dead I'm, I'm dead here. You're dead. We've, we've been wittering on for that. We've been on, right? on for that long. That Did we tell you it was a three hour special? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> three hours. It's not Thursday lunch anymore. It's Thursday all day. It's like an all-day brunch. Jim's never has charge on anything. I'm too busy working out. <laughs> um, oh, 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 we've got a bit, oh, got a bit of noise. Oh, oh. You can hear us in FM. FM stereo. <laughs> Away we go. We've had loads of comments. What about having an extra interchange of goals to goal points? Extra time we discussed yeah, yeah. that. Uh, yeah, we did mention that. How many uh, actual draws were there in Super League last year? Does us. it really four warrant a golden point rule? Uh, exactly. That, well, that's from the one, the only, Fred Parkinson. I totally agree with James, you, Dad. James, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> um, David Taylor, good point. What is the penalty for, for delay? Um, well, they've penalty not mentioned, for delay a game, yeah. That's, they've not that's mentioned point, what yeah. the penalty will be. And then if they boot it out of play, that's delayed game. Well, if, well if, if both teams take ages to pack down, who do you, you penalise? The slowest. <laughs> Will Sky show it, show extra time or bring kick off forward to seven Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good point. But that's they, a they bit don't too far. Yeah, but they don't have. They, it, as soon as it, it pretty much finishes now on Sky, it goes off, doesn't it? I'd be a fan of ten past seven kick offs. You'd be, you'd be done then, wouldn't you? Hopefully by ten o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fair point. Who, who made that point about Sky? Dev. Because it's a fair point. Because I'm saying at the moment it's full time. You pretty much have one coach interview and then it's finished. Well, what if they've got an extra ten minutes? What's going to happen then? It's just be like right. Uh, Julie Winks is on. Neil Maslin says lowering interchanges is key, stopping multiple huge players, smashing it out for 10 or 15 minute spells is compounding the injuries and meaning the clubs are more concerned about winning contact slash wrestling rather than yeah. playing and skill levels. Yeah, I you, agree with that. I think that you, there is a lot of uh, you, solid size, isn't it? Do power. you think that a long term change would be to scrap interchanges and just have traditional substitutions? So uh, once you've come on, you can't go off. No, that's a bit of old fashioned. That's a bit too old fashioned. Cameron Winston there. says, as a Leeds fan, I fear Golden Point big time. Oh, so they bit, were involved in a so, number of close games last season, weren't they, Leeds? So, yeah, so this de definitely um, obviously highlights the importance of. Yeah, you having a drop goal special. Having a drop goal special. It'd, be, it'd be interesting to know whether um, teams have been practicing. Who would be the drop, the, the drop goals then? For each team, it'd be obviously Danny Richardson at Saints or Warrington. Oh, you'd, geez, you'd, you've, you've talked yourself into a written you'd, piece here. Uh, ben you'd, Roberts. You'd assume. Ben Roberts would have to actually play. Warring, <laughs> uh, ben Roberts at Cast, Warrington, and probably Austin. You'd, you'd, you'd have to think. 
maybe Patton if he was on the field. At Wigan, you'd have. Hardacre's had him before, hasn't he? Uh, none of them's as good as Norman Turley. Norman Turley was the best ever drop ball kicker. Uh, Dill Rob says how can fans get there for seven when they struggle for eight? Yeah, Nonsense. Dave. Well, see, Dave. Defending listeners, sorry, sorry. I'll tell you what, we could, we could always. To be fair, kick off to be eight. fair, we could always just play on Sundays. Oh, don't, don't, oh. Go, don't, go, don't oh. go bring in, don't go talking about revolution like that, James. Yeah, uh, um, it's there's a lot of a lot of um, comments regarding golden points. He certainly sparked some interest That's on like our that. social channels there. But uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the discussion to be fair. Um, yeah. I, I want to chuck a, another couple of points in before we, we oh, have a look at the just, fixtures. Just, yeah, on. just a quick one. One more has popped up. Dom Hunt saw it Lam. I assume Adrian. He might, or he might have had one for two. He'd be good for drop goal. Uh, saw one recently that he'd like another middle before the start of the season. Who do you, who do you think would it make a good addition to the Wigan pack potentially at this stage of the season? Uh, who's available? Exactly. Have they, have they got any quarters? I think they've surely got a quarter. Yeah, they, they? they would have. They've, only, they've got... It's about to be some Australian that's you know, played about 10 NRL games <laughs> and will chuck 90 grand that. He doesn't like Wigan Dave, does he? <laughs> <laughs> what are they like, are these lobby gobblers? Yeah. Done, it, done it again. Come right. on, Dave, what, what are we talking about? Every club needs a, a, a Every Dom Brambani for drop goals. Yeah. Dom Brambani, yeah, he's, he's a good is, drop goal. Yeah, he is. He's a very good goal, uh, field kicker as well. Uh, Pat Walker. Pat Walker has dropped a few as well. Got to say, he was Pat and Walker. A few goals. And a few goals. Dave Taylor <laughs> says, I get to poping on each year in time for kickoff, but I set off on Tuesday. <laughs> 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 it's a bit like the show, that, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we've, got, we've, got a re- we've had a really interesting uh, fan mail. I can't remember when, we've, when we scheduled it out to on the site. So we have mailbox every Tuesday. You can write your letters into james at com. And we had a really interesting fan mail from, I think, Terry. I think he, I can't remember who he supports, but he was saying how Catalan, mm-hmm. basically, all their home games are on Saturdays. Yeah. They never get any move for Sky. They never get a move to Thursday or Friday night. All their games are on Saturdays. And is that fair when everyone, you know, I think he used the point of London Broncos, one of their first home games against Hull on a Thursday night or something. And it's like, you know, Catalan have got it made, haven't they? Because they play all their 13, however many home games, all on a Saturday night, all at the same time, all on Sky, all got the video ref. And they're not even an RFL member. (laughs) So, yeah, look out for that one on the uh, mailbox. If you didn't know, Catalan aren't RFL members. I'm glad that you've joined the club. Gonna get a t shirt made, you know, I think. Right, go on, Dave. <laughs> so, see, now you're trying to speed Sorry, me yeah. up. Yeah, we need it. Shot clock. Yeah, shot clock. Shot clock. Um, right, this one sort of came to my attention. Um, I was watching it unfold on Twitter last night because Featherstone Rovers have now uh, said that their ground isn't available. For the Bali Yorkshire Cup Junior Finals after it's been scheduled for I think yeah, a couple just, of months, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah, it's something not remember when you've got contacts in Fiji, don't you know? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I believe that there was even contacts from over this side of the Pennines trying to get the Bali Yorkshire Cup. For well, I can believe it. I can believe it. I mean, I mean, Featherston have shot. Uh, Feather, to be clear, so Featherston this side at Pennines. Featherston are playing Halifax in a friendly aren't they? So they cancel it. But I think Featherston have really shot themselves in the foot, haven't they? Because Featherston's ground is probably one of the most used grounds in in the rugby league, isn't it? Oh, you I know? think they maybe they've realised that they've not been charged as much because I mean I know the uh, national conference league have taken grand finals to witness, haven't they? And mm. actually took everything to Featherston last year. Mm. You're right, Featherston has been a... a and it's like, the, is this episode now going to put people off from going there? You know, and, know. and I think that Featherston a bit of an own goal for them, really. Um, you know, you've got a whole car witnesses at Featherston this week. Like you said, they have the conference league, they've had the women's stuff there. And it's like, all of a sudden now, they've just created a situation that they, they didn't need to. Because, I mean, they could play Halifax whenever they want. They could have played them on Saturday, they could have played them after the finals. Well, to be fair, to be fair, the finals are taking place on the Saturday and the Sunday. Right. So um, well, but but the point still stands, though, Dave. They didn't have to arrange their match to be played. Oh, they could have reversed. Oh, they could have played it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, um, um, you, you probably think probably think uh, Barrel will definitely uh, consider moving it, uh, moving it elsewhere. In, in, uh, especially when you consider that Featherstone have been so fe- moaning about yeah. the uh, you know they, since then last season they've been moaning about the the reduction in central funding. Now, obviously, 
stage of the Barla Cup finals won't be a massive money spinner, but you know, every little helps. It'll still bring some money in, yeah. won't it, like you say. And um, yeah, interesting to note as well that uh, I think the guy that you talked about earlier on, uh, Mr. Carter over at Wakefield. Yeah, I've seen he had been trying a, to get. He, he put a note in and sort of mm-hmm. said, well, email me and I'll see what I can see do. I so, And that's a prime example of how easy is that, you know, positive PR for Michael Carter there. I mean, Featherston have just created a negative PR story. For what, what benefit? What, so they can play Halifax? Um, they were in their league anyway. The final point, and this was sent to me on Twitter by Leith Dave, and he's asked... Who's he's he the, support? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But having said having said that, he's on about championship on TV and about... Well, yes, yeah, so we've had a lot of debate on, yeah, we've had a lot of debate on that. On this. Yeah, we've had, we've had loads of fan mail. Uh, we've had loads of mail to the mailbox um, on site in the last few weeks about the championship. Dave, Dave can send one in if you want. Yeah, if Leith Dave wants to send one in. Um, so our understanding is that there's the discussion being had about Toronto's games being shown on Sky, um, but other than that, n- nothing's really. Would that be a home and away sh- situation? I think so yeah, like yeah. so my, my understanding is Toronto Witness will be on Sky, um, which is um, is that double header at, at Newcastle, of course, with the uh, Newcastle Doncaster. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous that you think that what 15 years ago we had a live championship game every week. And yet, you look at how many channels there are and how much technology is advanced in that time and we've, we've not got any championship. Is it because there's a cost element and the football's sort of sucking all the life out of all the Yeah, well, up? maybe, but I mean, it doesn't cost that much to, to broadcast the game. It's not to be fair because I'm a, 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 I'm a Wigan Athletic fan and I've watched them on Sky a few times this year, but Sky have a, have a feature now where it's, it's a red button in you, so you can press the red button. And uh, it got it, you, you can pick what one of eight to ten games yeah, or whatever it is, league, yeah. and it's only one camera. You, yeah. No commentary on it at all. No punditry at half time mm. or full time before the game or anything like that. It's literally just well, the Dave, Dave, the Dave could do the commentary. Well, yeah, Dave, Dave could do Dave's the commentary. Dave's available. But on, on, on Sky, we're working on a new website for him as we speak. Um, <laughs> So on Sky, it's a press red button, select your game, and it's just one one camera, no commentary at all, and that and it can really be that simple. It's it's not about the quality or the production. The, the wider issue it's, is um, that the rights were sold on a ridiculous basis. Where how can you sell the rights to a competition without guarantees of it being sold? Could you imagine the prem, any football competition selling their TV rights without a guarantee of it of, of any games being shown? It just wouldn't happen. No, so no. I think you know massive. You know, it's a massive failure, really, it has to be said, of, of the RFL. But we jumped right back into Sky, didn't we? I don't think, yeah, but there's not an issue with jumping into Sky. It's more of an issue of saying, right, if you want the championship rights, you've got to show one live game a week. And well, the thing was that it also, it affected some other shows that were going on on other networks when mm. they pulled it all and sort of got really strict on, on mm. stuff, didn't it? Yeah. So I think, I think maybe, just, maybe, what about, you could, you could, it's good, there's got to be a championship on Sky. Or any other plat- platform, um, but if you, if you had it on Sky, because obviously they own the rights, so we'll use Sky as an example. One one game a week on Sky, and you could even have that on the th- you could have the championship on the Thursday. Hang on, no, no, you keep saying you keep, you keep saying this, and they keep saying put the championship. I on quite Thursday. like these are lads who are part time. I, I think I th- I quite like the idea of having like a Sunday evening. Yeah. You know, like a six o'clock on a Sunday or something. Well, like. did it used, we, did we have a, it used to be an old, an old slot. Was a yeah, six didn't didn't we have it? What what game did we have last year? Was there a Super League game that was on like a Sunday night? I can't remember what game it was now. And it was like a you know like half six or quarter seven on a Sunday. Really it, was, game? it was great. No, I don't think it was a million pound game. I think. Well, I mean, obviously, I know that was. But I mean, oh, was that a Saturday? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, but I think that'd be if you could get to a point where you know championship fans go to their game at three, but then they get home in time for the half six championship game of the week. So well, it, 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 you could even. I know, I know, Castlands are on, on a Saturday. So even, even as a start, you could just do alternate weeks. So the, the weeks when Castlands. No, but I think the point is that Toronto will always be on Monday after Catalan. Yeah, true. So like you know, you have your Super League Thursday, Super League Friday, Catalan Toronto Saturday, and then Championship Sunday. That'd be perfect. Mm-hmm. So we've sorted rugby league there. We have sorted rugby yeah, league. We've sorted it. Uh, so we've gone through all the talking points. Have we any more comments that 
Um, anybody wants yeah, us to I'll, go I'll, through, I'll do you really reckon? Um, whilst, he, whilst he's doing that, I'll fill you in with the pre-season fixture list that's happening this weekend. So this coming Saturday, we've got the big derby, Salford against Swinton, 1pm. We've got Featherstone taking on Hunslet Club Parkside. We've got the big battle of the Rochdale Borough between Rochdale Hornets and Rochdale Mayfield. Halifax take on Hunslet at 3. Bradford against Dewsbury follows at half past 5. And on Sunday... Hull Kingston Rovers against Widnes, I'm sure that you're warming up your rattle as we speak. Um, uh, Wakefield against Hull, Batley take on York City Knights. It's Huddersfield against Bradford, which is interesting considering that they're also playing on the Saturday. They must have a big squad, Bradford. Um, Barrow take on Oldham. Doncaster against Leeds, got to mention this one because it's Kyle Keswick's testimonial. He's been there 10 long years at Doncaster, over 200 appearances. Great bloke, good player. Um, so if you can get to that one, he deserves every penny. And then we mentioned before, Workington and Whitehaven, the Ike Southwood Memorial Trophy. Thanks for that, Dave. Just a couple more comments coming in on Facebook. Uh, Mike Malloy says, are the London games booked for evenings on Sky? Saints are playing them on a Sunday, but fans might struggle to get uh, to away games on time. Though. They're playing in three on Sundays, aren't they? I think that's their is regular, that regular slots. Is that those yes. slots? Or certainly it is during the rugby union season. Oh, yeah. Because they show it. They yeah, show really it. Yeah. Um, David Taylor says, play the bar of the games at Keithley. Good show. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be up for that. Yeah. yeah. Keep it in Yorkshire anyway. Um, Fred again said uh, reversing fixtures to a stadium that is not by, owned by the club is sometimes a no no. Halifax, for instance, may well be in use that day by the football club. This Halifax, is true of the Stuart 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 Um Obviously, Wheatley uh, know of that problem as Manchester United under 21s and the women's team now use the LSV. Yeah, the, the LSV thing. only turned around to, to Lee, I believe, and I don't know how. If I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Go on, Dave, go on. <laughs> go on. And um, <laughs> Lee wanted to do two friendlies, but I've only been able to book one in. Because, yeah, they're playing Broncos, aren't yeah, they? playing Broncos at the end of the month. Uh, uh, then, uh, anyway, that's all. Uh, awesome. Jordan and one Dusty. One <laughs> go on, Barrow. Up the Raiders. Up the Raiders? That's what he, Dave commented saying up the up. Oh, oh, not me. All oh, right, no, okay. Not, no, not yeah, well, battle, there, battle against Oldham that one was, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah. so that's us done and dusted for this week. Uh, join us next week for more nattering from us three. Cheers. Come on, Drew. Get back to work. <laughs>